I am Dr. Archana Joshi. Today, friends, we are going to discuss the nutritional assessment. Ideal nutrition ensures good health, increases productivity, and is important throughout life. Inadequate nutrition increases the risk of diseases and their complications and delays healing. Malnutrition and nutritional deficiencies can have long-term effects on physical and cognitive development. Malnutrition in children is a significant public health issue globally. It affects growth, development and survival. Malnutrition is particularly severe in low and middle income countries. Nutritional assessment helps in detecting deficiencies early, preventing complication and in improving the health outcomes. In India, around 35% children are under 5 are stunted, 19% are wasted and 32% are underweight. There are six major causes of malnutrition in India. They are overpopulation, poverty, lack of education, inadequate healthcare services, poor sanitation, and suboptimal infant and young child feeding practices. Coming to nutritional assessment. Growth parameters are the initial screening tools, but the trend is more important. For example, a genetically and constitutionally thin or short child may not be nutritionally deficient and obese child has malnutrition. Thus, besides growth parameters, nutritional assessment concerns early symptoms and signs of calorie and protein deficiency. Symptoms are vague in terms of tiredness, generalized weakness, which are often ignored and are late symptoms and are, they are not dependable. Calorie deficiency is assessed by clinical evidence of subcutaneous fat in specific areas like cheeks, axilla, abdomen, and buttocks. It represents deficiency of carbohydrates and fats and it correlates with loss of weight. An early sign of protein deficiency is edema when there are no symptoms and not even loss of weight is there unless accompanied by calorie deficiency. Skin, hair and mental changes appear only when protein deficiency is severe and this is referred to as kosher core. We rarely see kosher core nowadays but protein energy malnutrition is very common. Coming to the types of nutritional deficiencies. We have the macronutrient deficiencies and the micronutrient deficiencies. In the macronutrient deficiency, we have protein energy malnutrition, which is of two types, marasmus and koshokar. In clinical features, if there is severe wasting, it is marasmus. Whereas in koshokar, there is edema, muscle wasting, irritability, dermatitis and hepatomegaly. The micronutrient deficiencies are related to, to vitamins, minerals, and fibers. Symptoms of such deficiencies are vague, but specific clinical signs are bitter spots in the eyes in cases of vitamin A deficiency, glossitis and stomatitis in vitamin B complex deficiency, gum bleeding, irritability, bony tenderness in vitamin C deficiency, epiphyseal enlargement and beading of ribs in vitamin D deficiency, pallor with cholinuclea or platinuclea in iron deficiency, knuckle pigmentation in B12 or folate deficiency, and constipation because of lack of fibers, because the fiber content of the diet keeps the bowels clean and helps to maintain the health in the GI tract. Isolated deficiency of other vitamins and minerals are very rare. And nowadays, our salt is iodized, so we do not see iodine deficiency. Coming to the A, B, C, D of nutritional assessment. A is for anthropometry, 
B is for biochemical test, C is for clinical examination, and D is dietary recall. Anthropometry is the measurement of size, weight, and proportions of the body. We need to practice anthropometry and proper interpretation in every child each at every visit. We need to see the length, height, weight, mid-upper arm circumference, head circumference, waist circumference, hip circumference, and interpret them. We need to look for weight for length, weight for height, waist hip ratio, waist height ratio, and body mass index. Coming to the clinical assessment, we need to evaluate physical signs of malnutrition, like thinness, edema, hair and skin changes, delayed milestones, etc. We need to look for clinical signs of micronutrient deficiency, like bitot spots for vitamin A deficiency, polynuclear pallor for iron deficiency, and others. Coming to the dietary assessment, we need to do a 24-hour dietary recall. We need to assess food intake in last 24 hours. We need to interrogate the mother. Food frequency questionnaire is also there. We need to track frequency of consumption of different food groups. There is dietary diversity also. So we need to check if the child consumes food from all the essential food groups. Coming to the biochemical test, we need to do the hemoglobin for detecting iron deficiency anemia. We need to do the serum ferritin, transferrin, saturation, and more specific tests for iron deficiency. We need to do the vitamin D levels, and we need to also see the functional and developmental assessments. We need to assess cognitive, motor, and language milestones. We need to look for the developmental delays associated with nutritional deficiencies like we see in iron or iodine deficiency. The other relevant investigations which need to be done are complete blood count to detect anemia or infections. Serum electrolytes may be abnormal in cases of severe malnutrition. Liver function test in cases of kosher core to check for fatty liver. Urine and stool analysis to rule out infections or malabsorption disorders. Bone X-ray to assess bone changes in rickets. Thyroid function test to rule out hypothyroidism and iodine deficiency and others. Now, can nutritional deficiency be prevented? Yes, my dear friends, nutritional deficiency can be prevented. But community education is the key. Doctors must discuss the nutritional aspects with each patient for whatever complaints he or she comes. We should emphasize on inclusion of all food groups in the diet. Natural sources are ideal, but artificial supplements are only reserved for short period management. The food groups are as follows. Carbohydrates, proteins, fats, water, minerals and vitamins. Along with that, we have dietary fiber, antioxidants and phytonutrients. Children must consume one item from each group daily. Like cereals and millets, we should have rice, wheat, millets and other cereals. From pulses group, we need to have lentil, green gram, chickpea, rajma, cowpea, etc. We need to have seasonal vegetables. We need to take nuts, oil seeds, oils and fats like peanuts, walnut, almond, pistachio and vegetable oils. We need to eat green leafy vegetables daily and along with that all seasonal fruits, dairy products like milk, curd and buttermilk, roots and tubers like beetroot, radish, carrot, tapioca, sweet potato, fleshy fruit, uh, foods like marine fish, poultry and lean cut meat, spices and herbs like turmeric, ginger, mustard, pepper, coriander, cunim, etc. Now the question is, why do doctors neglect this aspect of nutrition education? There cannot be a justification for neglecting such important health measure. We need to be motivated and committed to do our best. Patients want a quick fix of their complaints, least realizing the importance of nutrition in health and disease. But we need to do a good counseling and bring about these changes. 
Coming to nutritional counseling and behavior change. Nutrition education is very essential and it is crucial. It brings about the behavior change in the family and community. It increases the health awareness. It enhances motivation. It facilitates the ability to take action. And above all, it improves environment and social support. Coming to the essential nutrition actions, we need to emphasize on optimal breastfeeding practices. We all need to tell them the importance of breastfeeding in all the would-be mothers and young college girls. They need to know that breastfeeding is the most important vaccine a baby needs soon after birth. Now, if a newborn could talk, he or she would say that breastfeeding is my birthright and my pediatrician should fight for me. The pediatrician should see that the baby gets adequate colostrum soon after birth. He should give this new mother an encouraging pat on the back and motivate her to breastfeed. The mother-in-law and the family should support this new mother who will feed their grandchild and prevent him from falling sick. No one should utter the word that breast milk is inadequate. The baby should be exclusively breastfed for six months. After six months, we should start appropriate complementary feeding along with breastfeeding. Weaning should be started with freshly homemade food. We celebrate this weaning as Annaprashan or Ushtavan. The mother needs to add soft mashed cooked food in baby's diet. The mother should continue breastfeeding for two years. The food to be given should not be very watery. We need to see that on tilting the spoon, the baby's food does not spill or run down. The food should be thick enough to stay on the spoon, even after tilting. By the end of first birthday, the child should be eating everything what the family eats. It should have all the food groups, vegetables, fruits and fibers. Iron, B12, folate and vitamin D are important for growth. But natural sources are better than artificial sources. The early symptoms of nutritional deficiencies are vague. Signs appear late. Weight falters early. So there is importance of growth chart and all of us, we pediatricians, must plot every child's growth chart in our OPD. There is a dual burden of malnutrition and obesity and it is on increase. So weight monitoring can be picked up very early and this deviation can be noted. My dear friends, to emphasize, we need all need to emphasize on a nutrition assessment, tell the patient about their nutrition and plot their growth charts and tell them frankly whether the child is obese or malnourished because prevention is better than cure. Thank you.